There was once a, uh, a group of businessmen that would get together for a monthly uh, meeting. And at this meeting, they would always invite their local clergy. They would get different speakers and different people to come in. Well, this one month, they invited their local clergy, and there was an actor that came in, famous actor. It was a real treat for everyone to hear him. And he was kind of the, uh, the entertainment. So he did a few monologues from different plays or different speeches from movies. And then he started to take requests. And he took a few requests and jokes and different famous movie quotes and different things. Until finally the, an old priest in the back of the room raised his hand and said, could you do Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. And the actor looked at him and said, yes, I'm familiar with it. I could do it. He said, there's one thing I ask. If I'm going to do it, I ask you that you do it afterwards. Sure, no problem. The old priest re responded. So the actor standing in front of the group went through the whole psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing, there nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. In a beautiful way, in a beautiful monologue, in this, in, with all the dramatic influx, like fluctuations in his voices, and it was a beautiful thing. And when he finished, all of the business room in the all of the businessmen in the room clapped and cheered. Thank you so much for that. It was such a treat. The actor then looked at the priest, and a little bit, a little bit cocky said, it's your turn, Father, when he really meant, beat that. The priest stood up with his kind of raspy voice and began, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. When the priest finished, there was no applause. There was no excitement. There was no fame to be found. Very simply, there was silence. And every businessman in the room was slowly wiping away the tears from their eyes. The actor stood up and said, My gentlemen, just to let you know, I know the psalm. This man knows the shepherd. I think in our lives, I think a lot of times in our faith, we can get lost into what is the whole purpose of the Christian life. What is the whole purpose of what we're doing? Like, like coming to Mass, is it just about coming sit in an uncomfortable pew and standing up and sitting down and kneeling when we're supposed to? Having some maybe some funny smelling, uh, some funny smelling stuff being burned and walked around the altar with? Or is it something bigger than that? Like, is our expression in our life bigger than just praying on what looks like a not-so-pretty necklace? Or like going and tell all my junk to a priest in a, in a very, very small room that's not really comfortable and kind of weird? Is our life, is our Christian life bigger than that? Today, we hear from Jesus, we hear from the, the Gospel writer, from Mark, that Jesus in his, in Capernaum, when he gives this teaching, when he stands up in the synagogue on the Sabbath and does what, he, what he's normally done, and he starts to teach, that the people are astounded because he teaches with a, with a certain authority. An authority that's bigger than the scribes, so it's bigger than just the head knowledge. An authority that's bigger than just good rhetoric, good skills in proclaiming a speech. I tend to say that similar to our priest in our story at the beginning of the homily, that Jesus speaks from an authority of knowing the Father, of knowing the God who he teaches about. I think for all of us, we can learn from that. 
in a very basic question. Do we know the God that we come to worship? Like, yes, I know I'm supposed to say my prayers. I know I'm supposed to come to Mass. I know I'm supposed to go to confession. But do I know the God who I worship? In a deeper way. In a more personal way. Oftentimes, you'll hear, we'll hear the phrase, um, it's almost a caricature of our Protestant brothers and sisters. When someone says, is Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior? Right? Like asking, do you know Jesus on a personal level? Some may say that sounds Protestant. I think it sounds Christian. For all of us, is Jesus Christ our personal Lord and Savior? Like we know, we may know that He is the Lord, we may know that He's a Savior, but we do, do we know Him personally? Do we talk about him a lot or think about him a lot instead of talking to him? Oftentimes, that, that can be casted as Protestant. But a man who was not nowhere near Protestant, who's still living today, Pope Benedict XVI, said something very similar in one of his most famous documents that he wrote from the Vatican. As Pope, he wrote, Being Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea. Being Christian is the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction. Being Christian is much bigger than just saying, I'm going to go to Mass on Sunday. I'm going to go to confession. I'm going to pray my rosary. Being Christian is much bigger than just this lofty idea that, man, if I do good, maybe I'll get something, or I'll be safe, or I'll be okay. Being Christian comes down to essentially an encounter with a person. The person of Christ. The person of God the Father. So in a real way, do we know the God who we talk about? Do we know the God who we think about? Do we know the God who we pray to? Who we look to for guidance? Each one of us can answer that question with a yes, but not good enough. I know I can. Yes, I know him, but I need to know him better. The beautiful thing is, is that in our church, in the Catholic church today, we come to celebrate the sacraments, the places in which we know we're going to meet him. We're going to come to know him. We're going to see him. We're going to be visited by Him. So when we come to Mass, do we come to Mass excited about an encounter with the Lord? Do we come to Mass ready to receive? Do we come to Mass with the excitement of going to see our friend, our loved one? Because that's what happens today here. We get the chance to meet the shepherd to meet the one who will fulfill all our desire. To meet the one who actually wants to have a place in our life that's bigger than just an hour on Saturday or Sunday. We get to meet the person of Jesus Christ. The one to whom God asks us to just trust in. To build our life on. Today, we come to meet Him. The same one that in the Gospel drives out demons. The same one who we trust in as being our shepherd in Psalm 23. That same God wants to have an impact on your life today. Wants to meet you in your life today. Despite the struggles that you bring, despite the, the, the pain, the tension, whatever it is going on in your life today, the good and the happy, Whatever it is today, God wants to meet you there. Right where you are. Because being Christian is an encounter with a person. The person of Christ. 
So today, as we come to the altar, as we come to see him, to meet him, to let him in, where do we need him most? Take a moment right now. Where in your life do you need the loving presence of God? What little corner of darkness in your heart that you're not letting anybody else into can God speak to? Can God bring His light? What burden in your life right now can Jesus come meet you in and lift off of you? Like if Jesus wants to, if Jesus wants to meet us as a person, let's be personal. Let's be open to Him. Let's let Him have authority over our entire life. Today, we come to the altar to meet the one with a love that satisfies. Are we open to him? Do we know him? Whenever we live in that intimate communion with him, when we live in a place that we know the shepherd, the words of Scripture, the words of our Mass, the words of our church, aren't just something to be performed. Rather, they become the words of Him speaking to us. Whereas Jesus Christ Himself, that Good Shepherd, inviting us into a deeper union with Him, a deeper encounter with Him, a deeper relationship with Him. May we be open to that relationship today as we receive Him in the Eucharist.